All right. Hope you can hear me fine. Um, if you can pl please take a seat. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I find this actually to be pretty funny. Um, cool. So yeah, I am Alberto from Moonbeam. Um, I do developer relations. And so yeah, today the idea is that um, I'm going to present to you a little bit about uh, Moonbeam, <clears throat> the bounties that uh, sort of we prepared. And yeah, to help you get it started for this for this uh, Polkadot European Hackathon edition. So super excited to be here. So I'm going to share my screen and we can get this started. And, and everyone, thanks for joining again. All right, so the idea of this, uh, of this presentation today is to give you a little bit of a sense of what it's building cross-chain connected contracts, right? So connected contracts is a strategy that we've been talking about for the past year almost. And it's, it's the idea of that contracts are not, uh, you know, bounded to a single blockchain, but that they have to think about, you know, a, a multi-chain deployment natively starting from, from, you know, from the get-go. So, like I said before, I'm Alberto. I work at developer relations at Moonbeam. And so, yeah, let's, let's sort of uh, talk about why do we think that the future is multi-chain? And I'm not sure how you usually do the questions and answers, but for me, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the chat in the second screen. So if you have any questions at any time, I'm happy to sort of stop and, and go through the questions that you have uh, if there's any, okay? So, you know, as, as time goes by and, and, you know, we've been in this blockchain space for probably seven years since Ethereum started, right? Because Bitcoin is, is the technology is a little bit different, but um, we've seen multiple things that make us believe that the future is multi-chain, right? I mean, we have increased number of users and assets and services on different chains. There's no only Ethereum now. There are multiple chains out there. There are new frameworks like what Polkadot it's, and Moonbeam it's built on, which is called Substrate, which makes building a blockchain very easy, right? I mean, when when before, you know, before, after Ethereum, if you wanted to build a blockchain from start, it was something very complex to do. I mean, right, you would have to define the language, you would have to define the consensus protocol. And a lot of these the, the things that make, makes you build your own blockchain something very hard to do. Substrate uh, removes the barriers for all this, right? And so there's also the Cosmos SDK. And so we have this text, tech standards that that tech stacks that make building blockchains very very easy and so that's another reason why we'll we'll see we'll start seeing more of, of these like little blockchains doing specific things this goes with the third point which uh, increasing chain spe specialization right polkadot is, is the motto for this right i mean we have blockchains that are doing something very specific very well and so we will start seeing more and more blockchains that are probably projects that migrate from Ethereum to build their own uh, app-specific chain. And this is because they want, they see blockchains as a, a scale-up strategy, right? So they start with the deployment of smart contracts and then they just decide to, to spin out to their own blockchain because for scalability purposes. So um, the current multi-chain approach is that centralized deployments and multi-instance deployments, right? For centralized deployments, the idea is that, you know, you have a deployment on, on a blockchain and then you ask all the users, all the communities out there to bridge to your project and your central blockchain, right? And this creates bridging user experience problems, bridging security problems, and you have a very limited market because you can, you're only tapping into the market that actually wants to do this. The other strategy is multi-instance deployments in which you have projects like, you know, let's say SushiSwap, which they basically just deploy the same set of contracts everywhere, right? So they're on Moonbeam, they're on Moonriver, they're on Ethereum, they're on Binance. And so basically the problem here is that you have fragmented users, fragmented features and fragmented liquidity, right? You're just tackling this little communities by themselves, not tackling the community as a whole. And so, why is Polkadot important in this sort of context? It's because if you, you know, we're in a Polkadot hackathon, so, you know, it's, it's always good to refresh the idea of what Polkadot is, is that Polkadot says there is no one blockchain to rule them all. There are many best blockchains out there. And the idea of Polkadot is that it's going to provide infrastructure services to these specialized blockchain to connect them, to secure them, and make sure that they can talk with each other natively. And so... That's why Polkadot, it's called the relay chain or the layer zero. 
And it's because the idea is that you have parachains, which are parallel blockchains that you know connect to Polkadot and they provide a specific functionality to the entire ecosystem. And the way that they do this is through XEM, which is like the native language for these participants to communicate with each other. And so the main idea of Moonbeam is that it's a, it's a smart contract parachain. So it's a parachain where people can deploy smart contracts that it's entirely focused on providing an Ethereum-like experience. So in Moonbeam, you can use, you know, hard hat, Web3 JavaScript, Ether JavaScript, uh, de deploy smart contracts that are written in Solidity and compile to EVM bytecode. So Moonbeam, it's entirely focused on this and it'll provide the most frictionless experience for people that want to deploy, you know, a, a projects using the Ethereum tech stack. And so let's go back to the idea of connected contracts, right? So the idea of connected contracts is that you can reach any user, any asset, or any service through Moonbeam. So Moonbeam can act as a hub for interoperability in which you know projects that want to tap into the Polkadot ecosystem can do it through Moonbeam, or you know parachains that want to you know provide a specific service to another project like an Ethereum, they can use Moonbeam as a gateway. Right. So, you know, we're going to go through different examples of, of different, you know, real world use cases of connected contracts. But the idea is that once I, as I said before, um, you would have sort of like a, not a contract isolated to one blockchain, but a smart contract needs to be aware that there is a community on Ethereum, for example, that you can tap into and they can benefit from your deployment. So Mookie has a couple of questions. Now. I'm going to write, uh, answer them right away. So there are two things, right? Uh, there's XEM, which is like the language that you use to move messages. And then you have XEMP, which is the protocol of how you move the messages, right? So, you know, if you think about, you know, email, XEMP would be the, the language that you cho choose to write your email on. And then the XEMP will be the protocol that sends that email to like the, the, the recipient, right? So XEM at a, at a core definition is just a set of instructions. And we're actually gonna look at some instructions later on in the demo that I have prepared for you guys. Um, and yeah, I mean, XEM, the, the main benefit that XEM has, or in this case is more XEMP compared to XEM, right? Because XEM is, is a message. Uh, XEMP is like how this message is moved is that XEMP sort of inherits the security of Polkadot, basically. You're already trusting Polkadot for a consensus, right? Polkadot is telling you if your block moved from a, a, a valid state to another valid state. And so Polkadot more or less can guarantee that these state changes are valid. And so if you send an XCM message to another parachain, you're expecting that the execution of the XEM message is going to create a new valid state as well, right? And so Polkadot, because all these chains are connected to Polkadot, you know, you can actually benefit from the Polkadot consensus while relaying these messages, right? Um, so yeah, we do have actually a tutorial in the works for like a Uniswap v2 uh, smart contract XEM deployment. But for, for this specific demo that I have prepared for you today, it's it's not tapping to a smart contract. But you know, we do have if you reach out to me in the Discord, we have plenty of tutorials that go through like how XEM, like smart contracts can tap into the XEM and so on. So that's that's for Joshua who actually asked the question. Sorry about that. Cool. So you know how Moomin can connect. Uh, it's connected. Can support connected contracts, right? So you know you can design smart contracts that access many remote blockchains that are integrated through cross-chain messaging, right? So Moomin has integrated with many GMP protocols like Axelar, Layer Zero, Wormhole, Hyperlane, Multichain, so that we can connect to all these other blockchains. But we also benefit from XEM, right? So we're interconnected into the um, Polkadot ecosystem as well. Moomin provides the ideal development, uh, development environment because it offers a complete Ethereum compatibility, right? So the Ethereum tech stack is the most widely used and, and most common for Web3 development. And so, you know, you can use all the tools that you would imagine on Ethereum. You can use them straightforward on Moonbeam. We even have stuff like, you know, Etherscan, it's called Moonscan, a Gnosis, is, a Gnosis multisig uh, friendly fork. Um, and, and all the other tech stack that you would expect, indexers, oracles, and, and all that. And Moomin is it's uh, it's connected to Polkadot, right? So if you were want to tap into uh, you know any specific app chain on Polkadot to access the, the, their use case, you can do it through XCM basically. So the key innovation here is general message passing, right? And, and what is general message passing is the ability from blockchains to move either you know messages 
or a, a subset of messages which basically will bridge tokens from from one blockchain to the other and and basically polka dot general message passing system if you want to see it like that it's it's called sort of xcm and that the technology that moves these messages from one place to the other it's like the xcmp but this is the core technology the in the, the breakthrough of innovation that allowed basically uh connected contracts to happen so there's two types of connected contracts if you want to do a connected contract application, right? So there's the hub and spoke model in which you have sort of the, the core deployment of the logic on Moonbeam, but then you have simpler logic deployed into the other applications that will use GMP protocols to talk to the, the core deployment on Moonbeam. And we're going to see a really cool example about this. You also have the point to point model in which you know you want to go from one blockchain to another one and basically you know these deployments are aware of the other deployments and then you know moving will be part of this chain to relay this message to the destination and so let's go through some examples right the first one that it's it's only bounded to to polka dot it's the lido liquid staking example right so lido offers liquid staking of dot and ksm and their deployments on Moonbeam Urban urban river and at a very high level, you know, the system is a lot more complex than this, but at a very high level, the way that this works is that a user will interact with a set of smart contracts of Lido from Lido. And then the Lido contracts will interact with an interface that we provide, that Moomin provides basically, that will this interface will set an, send an XCM message to Polkadot itself, right? And basically this XCM message will say, Hey, Polkadot, I want you to grab these tokens and stake them on behalf of this validator, you know, behind this validator, basically. I mean, it, this is a lot more complex than, you know, what I'm, I'm showing here, because what actually is happening is that you're going to send two XCM message. One is to actually send the tokens to an account on Polkadot, and the other one is to actually grab those tokens and stake them. But at a very high level, you have a smart contract interacting with an interface that allows you to send sort of, a, um, you know, XCM messages to a destination chain, which in this case is Polkadot. And they basically provide a liquid derivative of the, those stake tokens that are sent to your account. Another really cool example, which uses a hub and spoke model is a prime protocol, which is a, it's a multi-chain prime brokerage, right? So the, the example that I like to give here is that imagine you have ETH on Ethereum and you wanna mint um, you know, USDC, or like, let's say you have uh, USDC on AVAX and you wanna have DAI on Ethereum, right? So what you could do is, is deposit your USDC on Prime Protocol, and they'll actually allow you to mint DAI on, on Ethereum or get DAI on Ethereum. And how this works is that there is cross-chain messages being you know, moved to and from Moonbeam that tells Prime Protocol logic that it's deployed on Moonbeam. Hey, this user on AVAX provided collateral of X amount, so you know, go ahead and allow them to release XYZ dies on, on Ethereum, right? I'm probably explaining it super, super bad, but if you check, you know, their prime protocol website, you will find a lot more information. But this is a really cool use case of a hub and spoke model. So think about this, right? I think that you're not bounded to only the Ethereum community. In here, you are basically can tap into any community that you want. The the Moonbeam, the Moonbeam itself, right? The Avalanche community, the Cosmos community the the you know polygon community because this deployment is not bounded to to just one chain it's basically you know you can deploy it to multiple chains which is pretty cool and the last example that i give is, is what we call the port of call or moving as a point of transition which is the ability of of moving liquidity or assets right or messages uh you know from ethereum for example to a, a parachain inside Polkadot, and this is actually happening right now We have dot uh, XCM to move uh, dot from from Polkadot to Moonbeam. Then you have Axelar's GMP protocol to move dots uh, through the Axelar network, and then IBC, which is a Cosmos, uh, you know, crossing language. Let's say like that to get the, the the dots to to Osmosis or any other project. 
So it's really, really cool. And we have a, an example of, of, of this use case basically in this blog post that I've shared at the bottom. All right, so you know, to drive the point home, the main benefits of connected contract approach is that you solve the fragmentation issue of multiple deployments, you increase efficiency by using a, sp a specialized chains or scale out strategies, and most important, you improve the end user experience by hiding complexity, uh, infrastructural complexities, right? So the example that I showed here of Dot from Moonbeam from Polkadot to Cosmos is a very simple user experience because you know it. You only need to sign one one transaction on on Polkadot, and this this will you know let you move the dots directly to Cosmos. So. Um, we went through the slides quite quickly, and that, that was mainly the point because I want to focus on the demo. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the bounties, right? So Moonbeam has put forward a couple of bounties for this hackathon. Uh, we want you to build a cross-chain DAP. Uh, it can be either using a GMP protocol or an XCM to build an interconnected application. Uh, the documents, I'll show a bunch of documentation that we prepared in the following slides to help you get started. And there are two prices, as you can see here in the slides. Uh, the second sort of uh, bounty is not related to connected contracts, but it's it's con it's connected to sort of like using some features that Moomin provides to provide a better user experience. In this case, you know, we've made it DeFi focused, but in general to provide a better user experience, right? The two precompiles that we have are called the call permit precompile and the batch precompile. The batch precompile allows you to grab a bunch of transactions and send that as one transaction. So one signature on the user's uh, MetaMask wallet will result in, in a bunch of other you know, sub calls being done basically atomically. And the call permit precompile allows you to any call that you can think of on, on Moonbeam for any smart contract uh, to be basically a gasless transaction. So a meta transaction, right? So um, it doesn't. The contract itself doesn't need to have like the possibility of doing this. Uh, we provided an interface so that you can make any call on Moonbeam to be a gasless transaction, which would greatly improve the user experience because you don't need the user to hold, for example, Glimmer or any other token to actually pay for that. Uh, for, sorry, you don't need to. You don't need to hold Glimmer. You can charge a transaction in whatever token you want, as long as it is, it's 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 uh, compatible with the meta transaction protocol that you're using, like for example, by economy. So you can see here the prices, and you know, as always, you can ask any questions you want on Discord if you have any particular questions. For the cross-chain connected DAB, uh, we have a lot of content around this, uh, you know, because we are firm, firmly believers on the connected contracts strategy. So if you want to check a, a multi-chain DAB that we prepared, uh, you can check this URL. We have also a blog post that explains this the a strategy and architecture of a multi-chain connected uh, DAB. Uh, we also have a lot of content around, you know, how to get started uh, with Axelar, Hyperlane, Layer Zero, and Wormhole. These are like hello world example to help you, you know, start getting familiar with the protocol and how it works. Uh, and we also have a specific content for each, right? So you can see if you want to get started with Axelara, I've left a bunch of URLs here in case you're interested. Also if with Hyperlane, uh, the same with layer zero and the same with wormhole, okay? So I am showing you all this because I'm going to give you the, the, the URL of the slides. And so you can use this sort of like a, a tech book if you want to go back and, and, and read some material to help you get started with the bounties. Um, this is the URLs that I've shared before, you know, a multi-chain DAP if you want to check it out here and then the blog post as well. And so, yeah, let's let's get to the demo. I think this is this is the probably the coolest part. So you can see some action actually happening. Um, so what we're going to do, and this is an idea that I've had for a while, and I think it's, you know, it's, it's a cool idea because it's a way that you can actually participate in, in the glimmer staking, so in Moonbeam glimmer staking from Polkadot without needing to like you know use MetaMask or, or anything, right? So imagine you have, excuse me, imagine you have uh, you love like I don't know uh, any substrate based wallet like Polkadot JS extension or Nova or Talisman or sub wallet or whatever wallet that you like, and you can actually you can allow uh, a user to stake glimmers without needing to them to move to Moonbeam and, and sign transactions.
can be accessed is if it's Alice signs a message with her private key, okay? And so what this message is gonna do is basically when the XCM is executed, this the, we're basically gonna call these bytes that is gonna do an action on Mumi. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the bytes to do a staking action on Moonbeam. And then, you know, we're gonna send these bytes from Polkadot. There is a question from Mookie saying, it is standard for chains to publish docs on the format of remote XM transactions. Bytes will make sense on the chain. So um, <laughs> sadly it is not standard. I think I think there is a lot of like documentation that the Moonbeam team has put forward uh, around XEM that you cannot find anywhere else. Um, but what is standard is the way that you can get the call of the bytes, the, the bytes for the call, sorry. So I'm going to show you an example of how you can do this programmatically using the Polkadot.js SDK. But you can adapt this like strategy to, to any other chain that you want if this is something that you would like to do, OK? Uh, and I think I have, hopefully in the slides, I have the URLs for all of our documentation that we've done on XEM, which is it's quite a lot, I would say. Hopefully, it's helpful. So. These are the steps that we're going to follow, right? And and there's going to be a lot of moving parts, so feel free to ask any questions if if it's you know it becomes too complicated. But the first thing that we need it's a relay chain account. So we're going to use the testnet for sure. We're not going to do this in Polkadot, but we need a, a relay chain account. Let's call it a Polkadot account with tokens. Okay. Then we're going to calculate deterministically the multi-location derivative account of this you know account that we have on the relay chain. Okay, I provided the value here of this particular example, but I'm going to show you how you can calculate it later. And you can find also URLs that will help you on how to do it. The next thing is going to be to calculate the bytes, or like in technical terms, it's called the scale encoded call data to stake some tokens to a specific collator on, on Moonbeam. Okay, and this is the address of the collator. Uh, I've also built a DAP that will help you to calculate the, the call of the bytes. But you know, I'm going to show you also other ways to do it. And so step number three is basically we need to calculate these bytes here that mean something on Moonbeam, but for Polkadot won't mean anything. Okay. And then you know, we're going to use some tools. Excuse me. We're going to use some tools to check you know the, the messages and so on. And I've left some some uh, documentation here that will help you you know learn a little bit more about XCM, uh, Moonbeam, and, and how to do all these steps yourself. So we have, let me show you a little bit what we have here, right? So we have an account on the relay chain that is called Alice. This account has some relay chain tokens because, you know, she needs to pay the fees of the XCM message that we're going to send. Um, and we need to calculate the multi-location derivative account of Alice, okay? And so we have a very simple script to do this. But I want to show you first that, you know, Alice has an account that starts with 5 e and n but what's important is that 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 account that you see here 5 e and n is the encoded address
bytes that represent this module, this function, and all this input right here. So for example, you can see that I put, if I put one, you have a one right here. If I put two, you have a two. This represents basically this input, but encoded in a way that you know the 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 parachain understands it. Okay, and so you know, basically you can do this manually, which is not great if you think about it. You know, but the, the, there's two ways to do it. You can do it programmatically that I'm going to show you in the next slide. But I've also sort of created this application which helps you to, 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 to do this in a more, you know, let's say in an easier way, right? So for our application, I'm going to select Moonbase Alpha and I'm going to say, hey, the, the, the multi-location derivative account is this one, which is the account with funds. We need to enter the collator address. For our example, our collator address is this one. We're going to stake five dev tokens and we're going to put the auto compounding percentage to 100, which means that, you know, it is going to basically uh, restake everything that we earn in staking. So you can see here that this is a staking call and this is a proxy call. And these are the components that, you know, you can actually manually fill out here if you want. But the cool thing about this application is that if you click in this URL, it will actually tell you the encoded call data of the call that you want to do, right? So if you go back, you can see that I'm, I'm going to stake to this collator with this amount and this values that are needed to send the encoded call data, to send, to send the call, all right? Uh, all right, so Muki has another question. What is the relation of the address sending the transaction to the address on Moomin whose tokens will be staked? Yeah, so that is a really good question, right? So the relations is basically that the, this this account here, the multi-location derivative account, it's a it's a keyless account, meaning that nobody knows the private keys to this account, right? And so, in the actual blockchain world, if you don't know the private key, you cannot you know act on behalf of that account. But what happens is that um, the way that this account is calculated is via uh, a, a specific XCM instruction that tells Moonbeam basically who sent the message on the, the remote chain, on the original chain, which in this case was Polkadot. So the relationship is basically that this account, which will execute the call on Moonbeam, the only way that you can access is that if, at, in this case, if Alice sends an XCM message from Polkadot to Moonbeam, right? So th the only way that you can access this account to make calls on Moonbeam is by sending an XCM message from Polkadot specifically, okay? And so uh, Alice actually, it's an account that I created. So I can go ahead, for example, right now and create another account on Polkadot. Uh, in this case, it's a testnet. And I can calculate the multi-location derivative account like I've showed you here, for example. And so now Bob will have another, uh, a multi-location derivative account on, on, on Moonbeam basically, okay? So the way that you can think about this is that um, the private key of the uh, of a specific Polkadot account controls an account on Moonbeam, basically via XCM. All right. Hopefully that's a little bit more clear. But um, if not, you know, I can ask. Wait, Bob cannot access the account because it corresponds to Alice. Correct, because Alice owns the private key that sends that this specific XCM message to Moonbeam. Right. Bob can access another multi-location derivative account by signing his own Axiom message with it, it, its own private key. So basically, it's a private key mapping, right? It's like a mapping from a private key on, on Polkadot will own a multi-location derivative account on, on Moonbeam. We can do this with Charlie, with whatever name that you like. Basically, it's a, it's a mapping of a private key on Polkadot to an account uh, on Moonbeam, which for sure there is a private key to that account, but nobody knows it, right? And, and it's mathematically impossible to know it, right? So Frank says, I've read in the docs, there's a difference between mintable XE and normal XE. Yeah, for sure. I'll explain that later. That's a really good question, but I'll explain that later. All right, Richard has a question. I really love the question. So it seems that you guys are, are really engaged. So is the multi-location derivative account only used for this transaction only? No, you don't, you don't actually have to. Uh, the the multi-location derivative ac account is specific to a private key, not to a transaction, okay? The only important thing is that that XCM, <clears throat> excuse me, that XCM message needs to have an instruction that Polkadot injects either way. You don't have to worry about it, right? So basically, um, every time you send an XCM message from your particular account on Polkadot, 
you're actually accessing your uh, sovereign, your multi-location derivative account on Moonbeam, in per like basically, okay? So it is not bounded by, by, um, by the transaction, it is bounded by the private key. So Alex now says, how many multi-location derivative accounts can And that's it. You will you'll have a new multi-location derivative account printed to you in the 20 byte address bit. Okay. So you I I you know I recommend you to try it. And the cool thing that you know you don't have to do this complicated exercise that we're doing of staking. You can do actually something much more simple, like hey, I want to do a balance transfer. All right. I want to do a balance transfer from the Alice multi-location derivative account. Uh actually, you know, from the Alice multi-location derivative account to this account that I have here uh, on Talisman of, you know, one way token, right? And if you copy this and code it called data, if you copy these bytes and you send it the way that I'm going to show you via XCM and Polkadot, what you're going to do is that the Alice multi-location derivative account is going to basically transfer Glimmers, or in this case, dev token that she has on, on Moonbeam to this other account that, you know, we're, we're doing, right? The thing that we're doing here is a little bit more complex because it is, you know, we're not doing a balance transfer, which is like the most basic use case. We're doing something a little bit more complex, so that it's, you know, more interesting. But probably in the next time, I should probably do a very simple example, and then one more that it's a little bit more complex. So Richard says, so if you had a DID in Kilt with multiple accounts, you can just choose which one to use. Yeah, exactly. That's the point, right? I mean, the, the point is that does your DID controls, let's say, 10, 10 private keys? So then you have 10 multi-location derivative accounts on, on Moonbeam, basically, right? And you can just choose what, what whichever you want to uh, execute from. I mean, remember that um, you need to have the, the native token that you want to interact with, right? So in this case, the XCM message that we're going to send from Polkadot to Moonbeam, the execution of that message will be paid using DOT, but the action that we're doing, which is staking, requires that multi-location derivative account to stake, uh, to have the Glimmer tokens to be staked, right? So remember that you have to sort of isolate, let's say the experiences that you're gonna like interact with. XCM will be paid in DOT in this case, but the action that the XCM will execute will need you to have whatever action you're gonna do, right? So if it's staking, you need to have tokens. If it's a balance transfer, you need to have tokens. And these tokens are gonna be held in the multi-location derivative account, right? Which is kind of like scary because it's an account that you don't know the private keys to, but you kind of can control it via XCM, right? So it's it's definitely interesting. And I did a demo um, in some other time where actually you can actually do even Uniswap v2 swaps via this multi-location derivative account, which is super, super crazy. All right, more questions. I love it. So any Glimmer fee for the transaction, right? So this is what I was mentioning before, Muki. So the XCM will arrive on Moonbeam, and when it's executed, you're going to pay for it in DOT, okay? And I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to build the XCM together so you see the different uh, things. But if the transaction that you're doing on Moonbeam, if you need Glimmer for it, you need to have Glimmers, right? Like I said, if you're going to do a balance transfer, you need to have Glimmers because you will be transferring Glimmers, right? If you're going to do a staking, you need to have glimmers because you'll be staking glimmers. Okay. Um, yeah. So the the XCM 
execution is Spain dot because a message comes, you know, from 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 the relay chain. Um, you can actually pay it as well in Glimmer, but the way that normally the message is constructed is that you're gonna pay in the asset that you're sending uh, from the from the original account. Okay, so it's a little bit tricky, but we'll, we'll build Axiom together, and I think this will I'll answer a lot of the questions. Um, I'm actually writing the tutorial of the Uniswap V2 swap example. Uh, it's really it's not really that straightforward. So yeah, I'm gonna move forward. So you know, please keep the questions coming. Um, uh, hopefully, I can get to them all. But I want to make sure that I go through the example because it may answer a lot of the questions that you guys you guys have. Okay, so uh, let's let's recap a little bit. We we calculated the parachain staking uh, encoded call data. All right, so this is the one that I have pre prepared. But as you can see here, that you know, this is basically we're gonna stake. Some tokens that you know it's going to be from the execution executor of this of this uh, uh, action, which is a multi-location derivative account, and we're going to stake basically five DEF tokens to this collator and with an auto compounding of hundred. And this information is needed uh, for the call to be executed. And so basically, if you're asking yourself how you can do this programmatically, I've also provided an example here using Polkadot.js SDK. In which basically you have the Moonbase Alpha provider, the delegator, which is a multi-location derivative account, the collator, which is you want to stake tokens against him, the amount of tokens you want to stake, and then the the auto compounding. Okay. Um, then basically you can see that we can get the there. There are three components that we need to get: candidate delegation count, candidate auto compounding delegation count, and delegation count. So in order to get these parameters, you can follow along this code. Basically, you can actually query it and, and get it. It's not too hard. You can actually do this query here to get the collator candidate delegation count. The other one, you can actually do this as well. So it, we've left, I've left an example of how to do this. And actually, this is what this interface is doing for you as well. So you can use this interface if, if for you it's easier or not. Um, and then uh, to get the actual call data, you actually build the transaction. You can see here that I'm using the API transaction to build a transaction. This is the parachain staking module, delegate without a compound, and then I provide all the inputs that are required, as you can see here in Polkadot.js, all these little inputs. But what I do at the end, instead of signing and sending the transaction, uh, I am actually, um, oh, okay, sorry. So Frank, sorry that you cannot see the screen, but either way, you this I'll share the slides uh, at the end. So basically, you can you can see that I'm just calling the this variable staking call method to hex, and this will return the encoded call data for the call that you're building. Okay. All right. So hopefully, there's no questions on how you can get the bytes of the action that you want to do. Once again, if you want to do a, a simple balance transfer, uh, it's a lot easier because you know it's just basically you just need the destination and the value, and that's it. Okay. Cool. So. The next step, which is probably the hardest, and that's why I wanted to get to this point, let's build the Axiom message so you can see uh, what are we doing and, and what's going on here, okay? So this is the encoded, the scale encoded call data for the Axiom message, right? So I'm going to copy it here, and I'm going to bring it to, to, uh, to Polkadot.js apps because it's a lot easier for me than just building it from scratch, okay? Uh, let's, let's go through... Through, through each of the steps, right? So basically what we're doing is that we're gonna send an XEM message from Alice, right? Alice is gonna be the sender. We are gonna send an XEM message by using XEM palette and send, and we need to specify a destination. In this case, we're telling uh, that the XEM message, uh, it's gonna go to, to Moonbase Alpha, which is our testnet that is located in this parachain ID. So this is basically how you define the destination multi-location, okay? You can just copy this if you want to try it out later. And now this is the interesting part. We're gonna do uh, an XEM message with the following instructions, right? And and let's we'll I'll explain the instruction. I'll show them and I explain what they do uh, afterwards. So the first instruction is withdraw asset. The second instruction is by execution. Third instruction is transact. And in this transact is where we actually provide the bytes that we want to execute on Moonbeam. And the third instruction, uh, the fourth instruction is deposit asset. Okay, so I provided a slide that explains very high level what each instruction is doing. Okay, so the first instruction withdraw assets basically 
on Moonbeam, because this is executed on Moonbeam, will take assets out of the account and would put, put, put them on the table to do something later, okay? So in this case, we are saying, hey, I'm going to withdraw some dots that I have on Alice's multi-location derivative account. So these dots need to be on Moonbeam. So they need to be exe dots on Moonbeam. Um, and I want to, to uh, take them out of, of my account and I put them on the table because I'm going to do something later with these assets that I put on the table, OK? The second instruction is buy execution. And basically, you're going to buy block execution time in the destination change to do something, right? So in this case, we're saying I'm going to do a staking uh, action, OK? And you're going to pay with the assets that were withdrawn in the previous instruction, OK? So in this case, you're going to pay with the dots that you specified that, you know, hey, I want to pay with these dots that I put on the table, basically, OK? The next step is to transact, which is basically execute some arbitrary bytes, in this case on Moonbase Alpha, where you can actually do a staking action, you can actually do a schedule revoke, you can execute the revoke, right? So you can do all the staking related actions if you're interested, okay? So I provided as an example, the, you know, the XCM staking uh, for like scheduling a revoke if you're interested or executing uh, a pending scheduled revoke if you're interested as well, right? So these are just basically other Axiom messages for you to look through if you want. And the last instruction is basically a deposit asset, which is gonna, whatever was left on the table, just gonna deposit it to, you know, a specific account that I'm specifying, okay? So let's let's recap a little bit. We're withdrawing assets, putting them on the table to, to do something. We're going to grab a little bit of that chunk and then use it to buy execution on Moonbeam. We're going to transact with that execution that we bought. We're going to transact. And then we're going to deposit the remaining assets on the table to the account. OK. So Mookie asks, we are paying for everything on the Moonbeam side with XE dot that are held already by the multi-location derivative account of Alice on Moonbeam. That's exactly correct, Mookie. So I mean. I can prepare another example in which you're paying for the Axiom execution with Glimmer, or in this case, Moonbase Alpha token, DEF. Uh, but in this particular case, I can't remember why, because this example I did some time ago, uh, I decided to pay for dots, right? So you could actually, you could send an Axiom message beforehand that, you know, sends dots to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the account, to the multi-location derivative account, okay? You can actually do another Axiom message that swaps these dots for Glimmer and lives, leaves a little bit of dot, right? And then you can do another one to stake. But think about it, right? I mean, if the developer actually does all of this, from an end user perspective, it's just like one click, I'm sending a batch transaction with three XCMs, do everything for me, please. And this is the connected contracts experience that I was talking about before. All right, so uh, let's recap a little bit what we have here. So we have uh, you know, understanding the, the XCM instructions by themselves is not really easy. So I, I would encourage you just to follow this. Well, actually, I was I was wrong, Mookie. For this particular example, I'm actually paying the XCM instruction, uh, XCM execution with the dev token for the Glimmer token, let's say. I thought I was paying with DOT, but I'm actually not. I'm actually, you can see here that I'm, I'm withdrawing an asset. And the asset that I'm withdrawing, which you specify as a multi-location, this multi-location basically is this glimmer, okay? Or, or def in, in Moonbase Alpha. So that was my bad. Sorry about that. So in this case, your statement is correct, but we actually uh, need to pay in glimmer that are being held already by the multi-location derivative account of Alice on Moonbeam, okay? So now we are actually withdrawing this amount, which, you know, I can convert it really easily. It's basically we're withdrawing 0 0.01 glimmer or def tokens in this case. We're going to buy execution, basically saying, I want to buy 0 0.01 Glimmer worth of execution on Moonbeam. You can see that this is the same asset that you know I've mentioned before. Uh, and we're going to buy 0 0.01 Glimmer of, of execution. I don't really care what that is. I just want to buy 0 0.01 Glimmers, OK? The next step is basically we're going to do a transact, OK? And you, you should just follow along the here. You have to put the origin type on a sovereign account. In our documentation, we explain the different origin kinds. We're basically saying that this transact, so this action that we're doing, we want it to, uh, out of the execution that we bought, we want it to only take this amount of time. And this is basically uh, 
two billion picoseconds. So it's, you know, this is like the amount of time that we want this particular transact to, to take out of the buy execution, right? So if you run into weight problems, you know, hit me up in Discord and I'm happy to explain this further. <clears throat> but for this particular example, this actually works, basically. We're basically just saying, hey, I want you to take 2 billion uh, weight units of, of execution and just execute this particular hash. And if we actually go to Moonbase Alpha, these are the bytes that we're going to execute, right? Which is this call that I've showed you before, a parachain staking delegate account, okay? And the, the last instruction, which is not mandatory, this is just, you know, for because it's a, it's a good sort of, a, it's a good thing to do, is that whatever was left out of the execution that I bought, uh, please uh, just just give it back to me, okay? Just give it back to me to the multi-location derivative account that I have. And this is the configuration that you need basically to, 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 to do that, okay? So I know there's a lot to take on. Uh, I, I prefer to do a lot of like uh, help on this like async, you know, be at Discord because there's a lot to digest. But what I want you to understand is that this is an XCM message that will basically um, get into Alice multi-location derivative account and execute some bytes, right, that we've specified here. And that is going to do an action, right? So let's go ahead and submit this, right? So I, you can see here that, um, let me bring it to screen. I have here my Polkadot.js extension wallet, which I need to sign this. I don't really remember the, there you go. I remembered it. So you can see, let's let's go ahead and see what's happening. Oh, I think it already went through. So I have to go back. So there was an XCM message sent, amazing. And this XCM message was sent to, you know, this basically destination, the Parachain 1000. And these are the instructions that were sent, okay? And if you go to Mubase Alpha, you will see actually that you know Moonbase Alpha received a, a message from the relay chain. This is the event that it's emitted when uh, a message is received from the relay chain, a, a downward message. Okay, and so basically uh, there was 0 0.01 glimmer or dev tokens withdrawn from Alice's multi-location derivative account. There was a staking component. You can see that uh, there was a staking event. So now Alice is staking you know this amount of tokens to this collator. Okay. And there was a few balanced deposit events. So basically, this is the leftover of the execution that we bought. This is the leftover amount. So you can basically see that we basically use 0. Point nothing uh, to buy the execution. And this is basically to pay for the transaction fees, so the XEM execution fees, OK? And that's it. You know, our XEM message was executed successfully. And the staking action that we prepared you know, was successfully done. So Alice on Polkadot is now staking glimmers uh, on Moonbeam, basically. All right, we have more questions. <laughs> so yeah, my Discord handle, let me actually get it for you so I, you can actually ping me directly or tag me directly. Um, you can either, uh, for, for Discord, you can either tag me, which is Alberto, or Kevin, which is another DevRel resource that we have. Um, and you know he's very, very active as well. So I'm actually getting his handle. Um, let me see how can I get it. So yeah, Kevin is another person that we have from Moonbeam, which can help out, uh, you know, providing support for this particular uh, scenarios. Uh, I'm getting it for you. Or Kevin. Okay, cool. Let me see. Alberto, can only the relay chain have a multi-location derivative account, or can another parachain also have them? That is a great question. And basically, the what that what you need to understand uh, is basically that the multi-location derivative account is calculated by this XCM instruction, by, by basically processing this XCM instruction, right? And as long as the other parachain includes this XCM instruction, uh, Moomin will calculate a multi-location derivative account, all right? What's important is that um, the multi-location derivative account that Alice has, let's say, on Akala, it's different than the one that she has on, you know, another parachain or like A star, and it's different than the one that she has on 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 Polkadot because it will depend on the on this multi-location. And when actually Moonbeam processes this, it will have information about the parachain who sent it or the relay chain, right? So it will be specific to the original chain. Um, cool. So Alex, not sure if I got it right, but is there's a way to automate this uh, XCM message instead of having to input everything manually on Polkadot.js? Yeah, actually you can. Um, 
I think we have, let's see, we uh, we have a, a new page in our documentation site uh, where we actually will show you how to do this programmatically, like how to build an XCM message the, the same way that you do it here uh, with Polkadot.js SDK, uh, you will actually be able to actually build an XCM message yourself, right? It is not easy, but you know, the benefit, imagine, just imagine this, right? You, you have, you're sitting down as an end user and you want to stake glimmers, but you only control dots, right? I mean, you, by, by only clicking, you, you're, you're actually able to allow this experience to happen to an end user, which is, I think it's just like the future of, of, of blockchain, if you ask me. How to read the success on the origin chain? That's another great question, Mookie. So the success on the origin chain, we actually have to go to this particular event. Um, and then you can see here that there was an XCM palette sent here. And you can see that the XCM was sent and the strinsic success was basically successful, right? I mean, there's, there's no error message showing in any of these components right here, okay? So, I mean, there's there basically no error message in the extrinsic execution, right? Um, there is actually another way to do this as well programmatically, which is, you know, by checking out the transaction hash and you have to subscribe to that. And I think this is explained in the Polkadot.js uh, SDK um, documentation, right? So if you go to getting started, uh, transactions, it here it will show you, oh, transaction subscriptions only. Sorry, sorry. This will show you how you can sort of like subscribe to a transaction so that it's, you know, the current status and only when it's finalized, you can actually proceed to the next step if, if that's what you're looking for. Okay. All right. That was a lot to digest. I know. Um, let, for the sake of time, uh, let's do something else, right? Let's, uh, let me show you that Alice has, where is it? Alice has, you know, 20 tokens. She has, she has staked now five tokens and she has 15 tokens remaining here on her multi-location derivative account, right? So for the sake of time, let me do a balance transfer to this, this address here that I have, which has zero dev tokens, all right? So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna build this, this encoded call data, uh, you know, in the worst possible way, which is through Polkadot.js apps and not programmatically. And let's do a, a transfer, sorry, let's do a transfer of, of one glimmer, okay? So this is one glimmer, and this is the amount with, in way, which is accounting for decimals, okay? So the encoded call data for this, right, is this one right here that you can see, all right? So what I'm gonna do is copy this. Oh, wait, I need to go back to my XCM message that I already have prepared before. So sorry that I'm clicking all over the place. But what I want you to show you is basically that by just changing, if we go to the transact instruction, this is the transact instruction, right? And these are the bytes that instructed Moonbeam to stake the tokens in behalf of, of the multi-location derivative account, all right? So what happens if I just change these bytes, right? Uh, because what I'm doing with the other instructions is still valid, you know, and, and this bytes won't take more than 2 billion weights. This should actually work as well, right? So if I go here, I sign this, I'm signing it. All right, we, will, we should be able to see another XCM palette send message successfully, as you can see here, you know, this is the, the message that was sent. And then on the next block from Moonbeam, we should be able to see the, the message being processed and now let's see the events, right? So now there was 0 0.1 glimmer withdrawn from the multi-location derivative account to pay for the execution. There was a balance deposit event for the remaining of the fee, right? Of the XTM execution. There was a balance, um, actually this one failed. Did it? So I don't see the, uh, the balance transfer to be honest. There should be a balance transfer event that it's not being shown. So uh, yeah, I probably did something not correctly and the, and the XCM message that I'm building because there should be a balance transfer event here of the token that I, I actually put forward. I'm not sure what I did incorrectly, to be honest. Because if I go back, this account doesn't have anything in it. Let's see if I did something incorrectly. Let's try it again before I let you guys go. So I'm going to copy the XCM message that I originally had prepared. And the only thing that I'm going to do 
it's changed the bytes of the transact. So I'm gonna do balance transfer, in which I'm gonna put my account, my talisman account, I'm gonna put this amount of tokens to be sent. All right, I'm gonna copy this, paste it here, and then hopefully, hopefully this works. Let's try it again. If not, I will have to double check what's going on. All right, let's wait for the next event to show up. All right, we got a oh, we got a balance transfer here, but no, this is this is not it. Interesting. I would have to double check why this is not working. To be honest, this this has to work. I'm probably doing something incorrectly, but yeah, I would have to double check about what's what's going on because my uh, my balance is not increasing. But anyways, hopefully this all this was helpful. At least this taking example work, which is uh, the main one for for today. Um, are there any other questions or any any other comments? Uh, hopefully, I covered everything. I know there were a lot of questions. Um, so yeah, I mean, if there are no further questions. Uh, yeah, if you don't have glimmers, uh, you can actually swap dots. It's not that straightforward, uh, Manon. So I would recommend you to contact me and in, uh, in Discord or Kevin, and we can help you give not glimmers, but we're going to give you Dev Token, which is a testnet, um, and then you know you can get started with the Dev the testnet. All right. So you know if you are interested, this is the URL of the presentation. You can find it in this QR code. I'm going to also give you the um, the link to it uh, i'm going to put it in the chat just in case you are interested this should be fine uh and yeah you know join follow us on twitter go to telegram go to our discord uh ask any questions you like you know we have a very friendly community that is always very active to try to answer all the questions that you have hopefully you enjoy building on moonbeam and hopefully you enjoy uh, have a good time in the hackathon and yeah thanks a lot for, for the organizers of this uh, yeah me? thanks thanks a lot everyone Hello? for for tuning in into my presentation uh, so Alberto? i'm going to stop sharing and i'm going to do a little dance Alberto? Yeah, I'm still here. What's up? 